Bitcoin opening up today with a nice little uptick, but overhead resistance could mean it is just another test of the range and a perfect opportunity for risk to reward shorts. Meanwhile, silver continues, or excuse me, kind of accelerates its breakout over $20. And uh, and gold maintains its rally upwards over eighteen hundred dollars. Wall Street's putting in its third consecutive day of gains this week as we kind of proceed with today. Uh, excuse me. And uh, Congress is negotiating another stimulus bill, which could have some significant impacts for everybody and really gives us an opportunity to reevaluate what's going on in the markets moving forward. Um, meanwhile, kind of the European counterparts anyways, in the realm of politics is looking at another or maybe their most massive two trillion dollar stimulus package. So. All of that brings a lot of interesting, uh, uh, kind of a lot of interesting uh, uh, situations to, to the light. Um, and, but positively, this lifts euro markets to a to a five month high. So, uh, positive things out there for the speculators. Um, altcoin markets are continuing to experience a pullback, so we're kind of questioning: Are we seeing a shift in trend? What is the best method, and what is the best kind of route moving forward? Uh, we're going to find out a lot of those answers today. It's going to be a fantastic show. Join us for today's episode of Breaking Bitcoin. Hey guys, I'm Erez with Blocks, and you're watching Breaking Bitcoin. Welcome back to Breaking Bitcoin. This is your daily source for everything cryptocurrency markets and personal finance. I'm Justin Wise, lead analyst and senior mentor at CrackingCryptocurrency.com. Hopefully you guys are doing absolutely fantastic wherever you happen to be tuning in from and however you happen to be tuning into the show today, whether that's YouTube, Twitch, DLive, Facebook Live, or on Roku with the Investor News Channel app. We've got a fantastic show for you guys today. Before we begin, we are, of course, extremely proud and excited to host the fastest online community, fastest growing online community of traders and investors interested in cryptocurrency. To stay up to date and meet like-minded individuals, make sure to join us in the Discord at discord.crackingcryptocurrency.com. Link in the description down below. All right, guys. So I don't have much of an opening rants. Uh, we're going to go over some of the news tidbits, DeFi hitting $3 billion, uh, but kind of the biggest significance, at least for me anyways, as an investor and as a trader, is watching the kind of this very rapid shift. If you really pay attention to the daily charts over the last few days, uh, most of the biggest performers in altcoins are pulling back. We've got Chainlink, we've got VeChain, we've got Cardano, for example. Uh, and this is kind of what we hinted at yesterday, kind of seeing new altcoins come to the rise. And I want to issue a word of caution, right? So uh, we don't know for sure whether, you know, hey, is this the end of alt season or is this just a lull because Bitcoin has decided to do a thing? Is this breakout legitimate? Uh, I would argue a lot of caution about that. And we're going to look at the charts and give you guys a good reason as to why I think caution is warranted here and why the risk reward is actually still the downside. But one thing that I want to kind of point out is what I've been saying continually over the past few months, which is all of this money that's flowing into altcoins will eventually flow back into Bitcoin, and you do not want to be left holding the bag. This is what I talked about in the community mentoring session last week. This is what I talked about really with the opening statement on uh, Monday. This is what I talk talked about with the closing statement last Friday, uh, which is this sense of altcoin euphoria. And you guys have been here before, and the last place that you want to be is buying market tops, right? When something has moved up 10x, when something has moved up 5x, 3x, uh, it's not a good buy-in. And it's when you see this irrationality on Twitter, when you see this irrationality on Discords and Telegrams and on YouTube, uh, that this rally is never going to end, and you're stupid if you don't buy in now, and this coin's going to continue to soar, and you're ridiculous if you didn't get in. Uh, those are the individuals that you really want to be cautious of because if any of you remember those same talking heads did not guide you very well back in 2018 back in 2017 if you were earlier here before that back in 2014 so uh you know the advice to be recklessly bullish to be recklessly trading to be recklessly investing is not the best advice and although it can seem like a pain in the butt sometimes the professionals invest wisely we position size appropriately every single time when we trade with discretion, we follow rules. When we follow our system, we stick to the rules. We follow the program. We follow the system, the system that we put the time and effort into building so that trading is an effortless process. But uh, I'm really, really, you know, this is this is really my mantra because this is why we found a crack in cryptocurrency in the first place back in 2017, because we saw the writing on the walls and we want to see the writing on the walls again. So certainly want to discourage individuals from being recklessly bullish because that works for very small periods of time and it is no it is no quality of success to be lucky uh it is not a merit of a good trader to have luck 
It is the merit of a good trader to be consistent and receive consistent gains. And that's why myself, for example, and our traders, the traders that I've mentored and trained, have the ability to continue trading for a lifetime and continue to extract profits from the market, really regardless of what the market situation looks like. Whether we're bullish, whether we're bearish, we trade in the direction of the trend and we identify those shifts in trend generally before anybody else does. So we are short selling assets while individuals are buying all the way down to the bottom. So be cautious, uh, you know, use your best Use your best knowledge, use your system, use the tools and tricks that you've learned, use the tools and tricks that you have worked so hard on building and implementing into your strategy to help you navigate the markets and not the latest hot coin and kind of the, the you know, this, this, this really gross desire for profit and, you know, ridiculous gains. That is not a realistic picture of trading. Trading is an ability to extract uh, profit consistently from the markets. And that's the way we trade around here. So uh, with that being said, uh, we're going to go over a little bit of the news nuggets. Quick premium updates before we get into today's show. Uh, the Online Trading Academy is live. We launched that yesterday. We are aware of a few uh, of some members having issues accessing, not seeing that they are enrolled to the courses. Uh, that's a uh, it's it's a it's a back end issue. We're currently working on resolving that so that individuals can have access. Uh, when you have kind of subscription model tiers like we do, the control all access, uh, it's uh, it wasn't as easy as just flipping a switch, but a lot of members uh, already do have initial access to that. The initial reviews from the Academy have been fantastic, and we'll have the onboarding course up here very shortly before the end of the week. Uh, and then a very quickly following, we'll have we'll be uh, uploading more courses to the Online Learning Academy. We launched with Pathways to Profit, our flagship course. That 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 course is completely done now. Um, the only thing left that I would like to add, which I will be, is adding that course on proprietary trading and actually getting funded as a trader, whether that's setting up your own uh, fund, which I recommend, or whether that's going to work for a proprietary desk. And we'll kind of go into the tips and tricks on uh, how that works, uh, best process, press, best practices to do that and best practices to be successful in that venture. Uh, so the onboarding course will be up there. Uh, we're going to launch, uh, we're going to put up a course uh, that is going to be free for everybody so that they can learn how to use our general discord because there's a lot of tools and tricks and bots and uh, resources available in the general discord, even for non-premium members. So I want to make sure that you guys are familiar with that as well as kind of a general tutorial on discord and best practices for discord as well as the rules and regulations of our discord server. And... Uh, then we'll have the uh, strategy building in Pine, how to build indicators in Pine course. Uh, we'll have the risk management courses on there. We'll have the emotional discipline, investment psychology, and trade psychology courses on there as well. So risk management uh, and emotional discipline, those are kind of the factors that we focus on heavily because after you've learned the technicals of trading and after you've learned the backtesting process and how to build a system, that is really... Uh, that's really the battle, right, is uh, consistently position sizing, following your risk management system, which is going to be your guide and bulwark against the uh, against everything. As I say at the end of every show, it's risk management and emotional discipline that pay the bills. And that is going to be true. Uh, whatever market that you're trading, whatever style that you're trading, it's going to be consistent position sizing. It's going to be consistent risk management. And it's going to be uh, managing uh, the psychology and the emotions of trading uh, that, uh, that are going to be the biggest battles. But the more you overcome them, the more you grow as a person, the more you become, you grow as a trader and the more successful that you will be in any venture that you decide to follow on in life. All right. Um, uh, no massive headlines today. Again, kind of the stimulus package coming out uh, that's being proposed in the Eurozone, as well as the new kind of stimulus check that's going to be cut to Americans. And I've talked about this for a while. These stimulus checks are not going to start. This is going to be an introduction into UBI, which is really the only way. I mean, there's really no avenue left for the Fed uh, because the consistent problem that we're having in our society is that money is not getting to the lower echelons of society where it really needs to go. Uh, and so the Fed or the Treasury really is forced to make direct payments to individuals. Uh, this isn't going to stop, right? So this is not the best case solution. This is not the solution that I would like to see. Uh, but certainly they're backed up into a corner and they will not admit it. They, uh, um, yeah, we could go into that for quite a long time. And maybe we will here in a little bit. I'm going to bring the guys on. So it's going to be kind of a free form show. I'm going to bring uh, senior analyst Alex, junior analyst Jason, and, uh, and we're going to bring on Jack. And we're going to look at the news. We're going to look at the charts. Uh, with that being said, give me a little bit. We're going to switch over to the live scene. If you guys have questions, make sure to drop them in the live chat. The moderators are there to help you, not to hurt you. Uh, and if you guys are enjoying the content, make sure to smash a like on today's video and subscribe. If you do subscribe, you're not going to get notified that we're live unless you hit all notifications. So with that being said, into the live scene we go. Hopefully you guys are doing awesome. we got a great show for you today. Let's go. All right. All right, so here we are in the live scene. Okay. Oh, no. All right. All right. Now I'm going to bring on 
without further ado, and without further ado, I'm going to bring on the analyst squad as well as Jack. So just give me a quick second here. Let's get them on. Right, and I am live with uh, Mr. Alexander, Jason, and Jack. How are you guys doing today? Fantastic. How is everyone doing? We're doing I, good. I'm in the process of, of, of reporting LA Fitness to the FTC for refusing to give me a refund for an annual fee. So, just let it be known, LA Fitness, I'm coming for you. Let it be known. All right, let's uh, let's do a little bit of preemptory fun here. Let's uh, put some lemons in the basket. Let's get those distributed early. Let's see what the let's see uh, see how everybody's doing. Midwest dropping a diamond on us. Oh, I got dropping some ice cream. They they said they were gonna have a contest, so I wanted to make it fun. Bring it on. He had me worried. I thought I thought he was gonna drop a dime on us. <laughs> Ooh, that's next. Don't you worry about it. Yes. That's, that's that's what that's what everybody does once they get successful, right? They have to they have to make amends for what they've done, and that usually that usually culminates in dropping dimes on all their all their former associates and coworkers. Lemons, lemons. Isn't that what? Uh, who's the uh, Tim Tim Taylor? Tim Tim Allen. Um, Tim, Tim Allen. Tim the Tool Man Taylor. Tim the Tool Man Taylor. Yeah, he was. Uh, he was. Uh, he was like a. He was like a drug mule, and he dropped a dime on everybody and got. Oh yeah, I got away with like no time, and then and then he had his like big acting career. I'm I'm not making this up. No, wow. that's like that's like the same thing as um what's his face um uh, Robert Downey Jr. Like he went through some, he went from zero to hero. Well, Robert Downey Jr. didn't like send a bunch of people to a prison. Well, he did do a lot of cocaine and. Get Excuse me, sir. Trouble. Have you seen the last? <laughs> have you seen the last Avengers movie? I would argue that Robert Downey Jr. sent a lot of individuals to prison. Wait, like, so that guy behind the fence was his plug? The guy behind the fence was his plug. When you talk about, you know, that gives a whole new definition to the term, I am Iron Man. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was his fence. This is his fence. All right. All right um, you this area? Uh, yeah, so I think the, the... So I'm very cautious about this move to the upside. I'm pretty happy about it, particularly because I have to make a pretty significant... I talked about this with you guys, but... I'm making a yep. pretty significant purchase, so that means that I have to uh, sell off some mm. BTC at this price level. Not necessarily because um, this is where I want to be out of the market, but because I require the working capital. So, uh, and that's kind of nice. That's what I enjoy about being um, what I enjoy about being a trader and an investor is that I really do have control of my capital, and I can take a look and see. Well, what is marked fair price? Uh, what is marked fair price that I'm holding? What are kind of my long-term holdings? And what's the best value that I can get out of the markets if I do have to liquidate some of my assets? So um, with that being said, uh, I'm just going to keep with the, you know, this this first part. We're going to look at uh, a few charts here. But the first one here is just the Ichimoku chart that I've had open. As I said, the correct way to trade this trading signal on the Ichimoku is the, well, excuse me. So the current trading signal is the Tenkan Kijun cross. So we see here that the Tenkan did cross under the Kijun over here on the 10th. We do have a green support Kumo beneath us. Uh, and as I've you know said many, many times, you know you can just do a brief back test. People always claim that, uh, that green clouds act as support. That doesn't really, it, not really in my experience, uh, price tends to fall right through green Kumo clouds, particularly again, when price approaches support or resistance on lowered volume, on lowered momentum. Uh, and again, we can look at all the historical examples when Bitcoin has had this low of volatility, this low of momentum, uh, and uh, I believe without exception, um, uh, excuse me, with one exception, with one exception, uh, we almost always what? break to the downside. Why do you think that is? I mean, when you historically go look at it, like people argue this stuff like, OK, well, the green Kumo cloud is going to be support. But historically, it usually always rips right through it. So do you think that's just people hanging on to their biases that they want it to go to the upside or like is that's always kind of confused me? Yeah, so I think I think time zone matters. Um, I think times or excuse me, not time zone, but time frame matters. So a lot of individuals yeah. aren't going to be trading the daily time frame. So when people are utilizing the Ichimoku cloud system on something like the hourly or the four hour or even the 15 minute, the, the entire concept of the oh, it flips. Yeah. So the entire concept of the, of the cloud, for example, right, or one way to trade the cloud 
is, you know, when you're in a bullish trend, you want to buy pullbacks, right, in the bullish trend. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, something like a moving average or, you know, there, there's a myriad of indicators that do this, right? So the Ichimoku has many. You've got the Ken, you got the Tenkin, you've got the Kijun, you've got the Senku Span A, so you the actual cloud barrier. Um, you've got the, you know, the, the, the lagging spam, which you can interpret with price action as well. Um, but any in, in either case, you're looking for, you never want to buy the top uh, either of a bull market or of a current trending movement, right? Like um, if you're buying on a, you know, kind of one simple, simple rule uh, is that if you see a very large green candle, that's generally almost a bad time to buy uh, because there's been a lot of purchasing already. So you're kind of you're kind of buying into individuals that would be wise to distribute at this price level. It doesn't really matter whether price goes up or not. It's just statistically, if you purchase on a very large green candle, you generally do not do well. There are differences, for example, when you're breaking out of consolidation, you're actually looking for the initiation of a trend, but we use indicators to help us determine where those levels are and when that actual situation is occurring. But so I think that most traders are going to be utilizing something like the Ichimoku cloud on a lower time frame. Let's actually go down to something like the hourly and see if we can find an example here. Uh, let's go. This isn't going to be a perfect example, but this is this is certainly better than certainly better than nothing here. Yeah, so this is not this is not a terrible example, right? So price is in an uptrend and it pulls back. It actually cuts through the cloud here. But you know we can we can see it basically this this area or the Ichimoku cloud acting as an area where you would want to re-enter into this trend and then take advantage of the second wave right here similarly right here so uh, you know the settings that I have for the Ichimoku right now aren't necessarily tuned to the hourly uh, we can see it say, like that looks like a nightmare yeah we can but we could see it working somewhat decently here where we have an uptrend an individual wants to buy into this so is this a good place to buy in probably not after price has already moved up quite a bit. Uh, and again, here we see that consolidation that leads to another uh, leg of the breakout. But then we see a pretty significant pullback. Price pulls back into the cloud. So an individual would purchase here, you know, and really wherever they purchased in the cloud, price moves to the upside. Um, so a lot, a lot of different ways to utilize this. Uh, we can see it here on the four hour pretty well too. Uh, price has moved up. Price pulls back to the cloud. An individual buys. Price moves up. Price pulls back to the cloud. Price moves up. Um, so it just represents a... Uh, pullback area right so you know kind of the mantra and the saying is when price is in an uptrend buy pullbacks when price is in a downtrend short corrections right so uh i think that's that's probably why a lot of individuals utilize or consider the ichimoku cloud that way um because people really aren't looking at it on the daily time frame and these are the you know my cryptocurrency settings for the ichimoku cloud which is essentially everything doubled up so it's a little bit more deterministic, I think. So we can see here, for example, in this rally, price never gets anywhere near the cloud. Um, and when we do actually get to the cloud, uh, it's distribution and price falls through the cloud. Uh, in fact, we can only see one example, two examples really, of price bouncing off the cloud. Um, and that is here doing what it is supposed to do. Uh, this is the Jericho candle back in October of 2019, where price rallied all the way up to the bottom of the cloud and then fell back off. Uh, here we see price bursting through the cloud. Price. <laughs> This is I, I found this funny when I was talking about this the other day. Price pulls back to a red cloud that is supposed to be bearish, bounces off, and then falls through a green cloud. Yeah, I find that very very funny. Um, so yeah, there there are a myriad of different ways. I cover most of these. Um, I cover most of these in the um, the uh, Ichimoku video. Yeah, in the Ichimoku video. Yeah, that we have here on on, on YouTube. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's, uh, that's that. So anyways, getting back to, to what we were saying here, the, uh, the, the Tenkin Kijun cross, uh, the, the Tenkin Kijun cross under is a bearish sell signal. Um, price is not below the cloud, but you know, let's be realistic here. The bottom of this cloud is 7,000. So who wants to yeah. wait until 7,000 to put in a short position on BTC, for example, right? I don't think that makes a whole lot of sense. You're kind of missing the, the, the forest for the trees and that would be a buy-in area based on supply and demand for me anyway. So, uh, you know, taking that signal, the way that you would trade that is you hold that short position, which you would have open from around 92, 9300. Uh, actually, that candle closed at 9304. So if you took that signal the way you're supposed to, you would be short from 9304. You'd be in a, a small amount of drawdown and you would have been profitable for the majority of the last week and a half. Um, it's one of the most important things about patience is looking at that daily and when you make those decisions realizing that you got a week or two possibly of letting this ride out to where you might be back to break even but it's a better position to be short 
when looking at this chart than it is to be just hoping to go long. Yeah. Uh, and then, so the other thing, the invalidation of this trade is a daily close over the key June, which right now is at 95.09. That hasn't happened. Um, so until that happens, you really kind of hold open your short. And if you were looking, right, if you were looking for a good risk to reward area to add to your position or to enter your position, I mean, you're it's certainly, it. you're looking at it. It certainly is yep. right now. Um, Unless, I mean, yeah, you could even uh, hesitantly put it in your orders at the Kijun and then see like how well it holds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because so that is a big cloud, man. Yeah. So that's that's the setup. Certainly, this would be targeting uh, again, moving down to the seven thousand dollar area. But I would certainly be peeling off profits uh, once price hit the future valuation of the cloud, which right now is at eighty one thirty nine. That's where the spawn B is at. Um, so that's about it for the Ichimoku. Nothing's really changed. Uh, there's no invalidation of that trade signal right now. Um, looking at the Donchian system, which is pretty sensitive, uh, this is going to be signaling for a long, a tentative long on a daily close above uh, 91.77. Let's see the clock. Actually, excuse me, 92.19 uh, is where the actual uh, Donchian baseline is coming in at the upper boundary up at 92.60. Um, so uh, con confliction, here, confliction here, but I'm going to go ahead and hold open my original position uh, based on what this, especially because TSI is below the zero line here, and especially because uh, time transformation itself is below the zero line. So really no centered oscillator signal. The line cross signal here is fine. You actually got that on the uh, 18th of July here, and this candle closed at 91.89. So if you're using kind of that continuation or some slight reversal system, uh, you're up about 2% on that trade. I'd be fairly happy with that. But um, the overall yeah. dominant metrics aren't here because TT is still below zero. Uh, it is supposed to be utilized as a centered oscillator, and we can see the best signals actually come from utilizing TT and Minx actually as centered oscillators. It's, it's interesting that um, with time transformation there, that the unnatural volume coming in, you see some of those candles that are bigger than the current one that we have that still didn't trigger the unnatural volume. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I like that. But, I mean, a close above that, I mean... Yeah, because I do think in the, the short term, we might get a little bit of a pullback, but I do believe it'll close above the donchi in there. Yeah, likely on today's daily candle, I would agree. Mm -hmm. um, now, the, the other thing, too, I want to kind of talk about, you brought up a good point there about the unnatural volume. The reason why is because uh, let's, let's actually pull up the regular volume indicator. The reason why is because uh, volume has been consistently dropping. Um, mm -hmm. And if we, sorry, not color, but I want to look at the volume moving average. So unnatural volume is going to work when price is X percent amount, uh, X percent when volume is uh, X percent amount, the default is 2X uh, above the volume moving average. And with, oh, with yep, falling yep, yep. volume, it's not too difficult to encounter that. But we can see here the unnatural volume candles that we've gotten based on volume. So here's the, uh, the first one in this scenario on the 2nd of June, and then on the 11th of June, and then now here on the 21st of July. Well, the 20th of July, but the candle is 21st. Yeah, yeah, sorry, 21st of July. People are pointing out silver and gold are going nuts right now. Silver and gold are going absolutely nuts. Uh, it's been a good time to be stacking silver now that we're above 20. Um, I wouldn't be doing any purchasing above 20. Uh, I was really happy to accumulate below 20 to get as much silver as I possibly could below 20. And I fact, in fact, I think that was the last, not the last, but that was the, the Money Monday that you and I did, Alex, was purchasing some silver when we were still below $20. So I do yeah, think taxes, it was like $23. So, well, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Taxes. And there's going to be, well, here's the thing. If, if this plays out the way that I think it's going to, um, there's going to be such a premium on physical bullion that is not um, paper or held yeah, um, in accounts. It's gonna uh, be nuts. The, the demand is going to be extremely high because the, the amount, the amount of, um, deliverable silver that's going to be that, that needs to be delivered doesn't exist. Comex doesn't have it. Yeah. So, yeah. I wonder when that's and, and, a breaking point. Yeah. In 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 the market, so you, you hear about paper silver and paper gold. That is how large large entities short. Yeah, because you can't yeah. have that much physical gold. <laughs> yeah. So they they literally they they create they create the paper the paper gold and the paper silver. Um, and, and then they sell that on the open market, and, and then that's how they go short the market. So which, that's why there's so much more paper gold and paper silver out there than there is actually physical gold. And which physical technically paper. means that they they can almost double the supply by short selling paper. Oh, no, I, I think the supply is like five or ten times. Yeah. I, mean, I, I wouldn't even yeah, say you like get double. What I mean. yeah. like, <clears throat> just the ability to short it means that you're creating gold that doesn't exist. 
like <clears throat> in the paper markets. Yeah. Similar risk will apply to Bitcoin in the future, if not already. Yeah, I wonder when that's coming too, right? Yeah, I wonder if that have happened since the CME launched the Bitcoin futures. If you think about it, you know, what happens to these to these large entities if like they they they're asked to deliver on these like physical uh, the on the paper gold and stuff like that? Are we going to see as the price of gold and silver goes to the roof? Are we going to see these entities just like crumble? Uh, how does it work? I I'm like, interested to see it that. too, man. I like, heard reports that's... of that a few months ago that like there was already issues with uh, deliveries that caused I think the the spike a couple months ago in the price. <laughs> just well, like, and, the Bitcoin guys. <laughs> and with that whole China story that come out of the billions of dollars of fake gold, I mean. I'm surprised that that hasn't had a bigger, but I mean, we are seeing it right now, of course. Yeah, I think you're seeing the follow through on 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 that right now. Well, and yep. it's and, and and from the moment, and again, that was just a, it, you know, the rally on gold, the rally on silver was already occurring, and then that mm -hmm. news story came out. So it's just kind of confirmation of the sign of the times. Yep. Um, but I'm not sure exactly how it'll how it'll play out. Certainly, if we look at uh, like J.P. Morgan's largest short seller of silver, for example, right. Um, they certainly have enough capital from other areas, but they're going to have to make sacrifices if they actually end up getting getting pinned and stuck with that. So the first thing that you're going to see is you're going to see pretty big movements in other areas of the market, which will which will be a good indication of what other assets uh, J.P. Morgan and these large broker dealers or these large um, institutional funds consider more sacrificial. Right. So I think this this. See, I think this poses poorly for certain equity markets. So equity markets that are at relative highs and retail have really bought in a big way, kind of at these kind of local tops and everybody's looking for a big indice breakout right here. I think you're going to see negative pressure um, as, uh, as, these, as these banks and short sellers need to liquidate other assets so that they can cover uh, you know, the, the, mm -hmm. the, the actual physical cost of this, particularly with paper silver, because you're not entitled to physical delivery. Uh, you're entitled to... You know, at the, in the best of circumstances, you're entitled to cash compensation, right? So, for example, like imagine some of these paper silver, uh, the, you know, we find out, which I, I think is probably true, that a lot of these paper silver funds or ETFs don't actually have or have access to the deliverable silver. Well, only the, um, you know, only the, uh, the authorized user uh, of, uh, of an ETF, for example. So like the broker that actually issues the shares of an ETF is, uh, is, uh, is, is, um, uh, is is going to to be entitled to physical delivery uh, to the best of my understanding so the the actual retail individual buying the etf share or buying the paper silver they're not entitled to physical delivery um it's like it's like the same as common and preferred stock so there's going to be there's going to be a there's going to be a negotiation there's going to be bankruptcies there's going to be a lot of chaos and disaster dogs and cats sleeping together absolute pandemonium and uh you're going to see the the demand for physical bullion that are outside of the control of these individuals skyrocket, and uh, you know I don't think I don't think it's likely to happen. But what you could see is another. Um, uh, you know, we're talking about this the other day, Alex, when when we were purchasing silver, and you 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 know you mentioned that you're like, man, I'm a little I'm, I'm kind of worried about driving around the United States with this, uh, um, you know, forced confiscation, right? Um, I, that, that civil forfeiture. Terrible. Yeah, civil forfeiture. Civil I mean. Forfeiture. That is that is certainly not that is certainly not out of bounds. I mean, they've done it before. Like the United States government did Coming this for before. Your feelings. Yeah. yeah, the United States government did this before. So, um, certainly, it's a good time to be holding hard money, gold, you know, silver, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Baby. You know, you raise a valid point. You know, at, at one point, the government made everybody turn in your gold. Like everybody, you have mm -hmm. to turn your gold. You're outlawed. Could they make people do that for Bitcoin? It's like, okay, we've got we've got our own central bank yeah. currency. Turn in your Bitcoin. Yeah. I do love that it's a different story now, though, because taking physical gold from someone's much easier than taking my keys. If I got it memorized, what are you gonna do, bitch? Like, five dollar wrench attack. Yeah, I mean, what they're gonna. I mean, but here's the here's the thing. Like, give me your Bitcoin keys. The the, quant the quantity of Bitcoin that they're gonna be Get able. Waterboarded. Look at uh, well, but look at exchanges like Coinbase that are already you know really really tight and close to the United States government. Um, yeah, yeah. And they're selling analytic software to, to the stuff. IRS. Yeah. So I mean, I I don't see a huge stretch on, um, uh, you know, if if things get really really bad, a civil forfeiture case on exchanges like Coinbase, for example, which is why you've seen this yeah. mass ex exodus of of assets out of Coinbase, and why I'm a pretty firm proponent. If you're holding a large quantities of Bitcoin and you hold it as hard money, you hold Bitcoin for for really what's in, what it's intended to be, um, then you need to have a ledger. Uh, 
uh, you need to have a ledger you need or you know some uh, you know i recommend a ledger because that's going to be kind of the best uh, best case solution you need a ledger you need to get a crypto tag you know engrave your uh, your seed phrase in titanium and store that somewhere securely store your ledger nano x because you're going to see them they're going to go for the low-hanging fruit they're going to go for the money that's on exchanges they're going to go for the bitcoin that's on exchanges before they actually start knocking on doors and asking individuals to turn turn in all ledgers and paper wallets by order of the united states <laughs> yeah that'd be crazy so yeah it's def anything's possible right i mean it's like sorry i, I definitely i definitely lost the seed, seed phrase yeah. in my fishing pole yeah. and i can't turn it over so yeah it's my fishing pole man yep some of you in the audience will get that one i, I certainly don't <laughs> oh okay i uh, certainly don't er earlier in the year the the government asked this uh <sighs> They asked this one criminal to turn over part of his crypto stash, and and he claimed that he had unfortunately lost access to the funds due to like he had had like it Craig, engraved right? inside of like a piece of titanium that he stored in his fishing pole, and, and something happened to it. That's he actually had, he, he had his seed in the fishing pole. I, I hey, it's a classic so, meme, right? For me. Like the, the, the meme Jamie, goes back. It. I think to um, to gun, gun confiscation. So when the feds come on looking for your guns, you tell them you lost them in the fishing axe and you had them on the boat with you and they fell off the side and they're oh, somewhere you, in the you, lake. You. So it's, it's you know horrible. you don't you don't know what happened to them, right? It's the same thing with your ledger. Right? I was fishing them. and it slipped out, slipped out the boat. If they want it, they can hire uh, a diving squad to recover it. Ooh. My dog ate my treasure. Hello. Now USO looks good. Yesterday yeah. I wasn't so sure. Yeah, USO had this had the nice uh, breakout above. Uh, pretty good days. Pretty good day for stocks in general. Uh, I do want to thank uh, Challenged Investor for the tip on SILJ. We didn't get an opportunity to talk about this yesterday, but again, huge big volume spike coming in yeah, today. Fun, yeah, yeah. Uh, like I didn't like it on my chart, but when I, you showed it to me yesterday, that descending triangle looks really good. Yeah. Ascending triangle. I said ascending. You said descending. Did I? Potato, potato. Nope, there's a big difference. <laughs> Let's call the whole thing off. Let's get out of here. Let's get. Sorry, guys. Let's just. Uh, you guys want to go to the beach for the rest of the day? Yeah. All right. Well, no, no masks. Uh, let's see here. Trump admits he controls the. Right? Trump admits he controls the stock market. I don't. I don't. I don't think Trump. <laughs> Trump actually controls much. I don't think the executive branch. Well, listen, the executive branch of the government is there to control a whole lot of things, but not not in the way I think that. Yeah, it's got less power than people think, but still enough. You know, the Fed has exactly as much power as people think it has. Like right yep. now, people think the Fed can pump the stock market, and so the Fed can totally pump the stock market. All they have to do is like release an announcement. They're like, don't worry, we're going to do X thing that is like, you know, un unfathomable just like last year. But like, okay, you know, that is technically bullish for the stock market. Um, but you know, once people realize that you know all the Fed has a hammer is a hammer, and the comp the problem might be more complicated, then that faith might go away. I mean, you know, the way that's that's a that's a long term thing, and the way that that yeah. will play out and has to play out is the same way it's played out with every other currency that's failed, which is so as long as the Fed continues to print money, the the markets are likely to continue going up because that money is going to go right into the hands of wealthy individuals and that money is going to go into the market. Uh, so, you know, real estate prices are going to go up. You know, what's ridiculous right now, and I can tell you this from my experience currently in the real estate market, is that it's a seller's market. Uh, it is not a buyer's market and you might think that it is. So uh, I would caution individuals on on, on thinking that it's the uh, that it's the right uh, the, the right time to be, to be extremely I'm, bullish in real estate. But I'm getting prepped for another 08 scenario on real estate to be honest with you because i'm going to keep cash on the side and then buy a property when it inevitably tanks in my opinion uh do we'll get in another 08 scenario do i think if trump loses the markets will continue sam i think it's pro i think i think it is probably more bullish in the short term if trump were to be reelected. Uh, i think that kind of the so the the common thought on this right is if trump loses the election that the markets will tank. I don't think that's the case. I think that they might slip. I think that they might slip in a significant way. And there's a, there's kind of a short term opportunity, uh, a, a bespoke tranche opportunity, if you would. But uh, if the Fed continues to print money, it doesn't matter who's in office. 
It's, right. it's never it's never mattered who's in office, you know. It's, um, it's a game of hot potato that's been going for fifty years. Now, I I won't I won't lie and say. Uh, so my opinion on this is slightly different. It 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 does matter who's in office. Our our public and and certainly our foreign and slightly domestic policy uh, does change. But when it comes to the monetary policies of our country, that has almost had no influence. It's it's had almost no effect. Uh, you know who was in office, what their personal opinions were. Uh, you know, the monetary policy of the United States is um, is 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 on a course uh, because all 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 fiat all fiat all fiat currencies are on a course. All fiat currencies start the same, progress the same, and end the same. And there's there's this is just how it goes. Um, now, the United States is a is a huge economy. Um, I think everybody is is thinking that the end is nigh. It might not be, uh, but regardless of whether it is or not, regardless of whether we make it out the other side of this and things are relatively the same for the next 20 or 30 years, um, or 50 years or 100 years, uh, there is still value and, and the value of hard assets continually gets bid up, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, kind of the, the, the long-term investment goal and why the difference between investing and swing trading, for example, even on or positional trading, like positional trading you could hold for months, sometimes years. Investments are things that you never intend to sell because you know that not only will their value continue to go up consistently over time, this is why I, I invest in very few things, I trade a lot of things. So the things that I invest in, I have no intention of ever selling. Gold, silver, Bitcoin, a few other things, uh, some stocks that I hold, particularly dividend stocks, I never intend on selling those uh, because they're valuable. Um, but if, if forced, I would certainly sell the securities over the, over the hard money because when economies collapse or when currencies devalue, um, the, the hard money comes in and gets bid up to realize the actual NAV, net asset value of the debased currency, in this case, the United States dollar. So um, only if you're referring to the last 5,000 years. Yeah. I mean, only if we're talking about pretty much all of recorded history, <laughs> pretty much all of monetary history. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I really do like USO here. Uh, we did get the, we did get the breakout target for this is at least 33. Um, uh, throwback is throwbacks kind of to be expected here. Again, I'm pretty conservative and cautious. I'm not looking to take advantage of any huge breakout trades here. Um, uh, just, uh, you know, entered my positions when I should have and allowing them to continue and progress as I should. So again, I'm still, I, I am still long on USO. Uh, I actually am long on SPLG, but the trade that I signaled for and uh, indicated- hasn't hit a take profit? Uh, so the, S, uh, the, the CFD trade, did. I was gonna say you yeah. should be locked in by now. Yeah, just just as of today, right? So the the take profit for the SPX 500 USD CFD was 32.74, and we hit 32.82 today. Uh, yesterday we had only hit a high of 32.58, so we were a little uh we were a little below that. A little below that. Um. All right, it is 12:45. Uh. So let's um. Is there any uh? I can I can switch on. Is there any charts that you guys want to look at? Bitcoin. All right, you want to share? You want me to turn your screen on? Um, let me just get all my illicit activities off the screen. Yep, we're all good. All right, we'll get off that White House market. <laughs> White House, WhiteHouse.com. Yes, uh, well, you got to it's, it's Tor, so I. Stuff. Anyways, moving on. Um, <laughs> let's get Discord on here, and there we go. I do have uh, Alex's screen up on the chart. Oh, do we? Okay. So yeah, I um, I've been talking about F Bitcoin for a while here. Um, we just got another weekly close where we have held above this this resistance right here. Um, I think things are continuing to look very bullish here. Um, let's look at FUSD. Got a nice little got a nice little tap into this order block down here. Previous uh, resistance turn support. And um, and it looks like we've gotten a uh, let's see this is a uh, yeah this is a you know this is this this weekly cross is not yet confirmed we this will not confirm until the end of the week mm. um, this is yeah I, I would not call that confirmed however um, I think this looks incredibly bullish here more bullish than Bitcoin which is uh, pretty historical like I said I I think. I think sellers have just run out of steam here. Um, we're going to get a, a nice cross up on time transformation at the end of this week, uh, presuming we don't close back below this uh, 9,300 
border block area that we've been uh that we've been accumulating in over the past month and a half which is also excuse me this is also a uh a resistance turn support area that that i'm really fond of uh 9300 to 9000 so um there's a lot of alt charts that i i think look really incredible um do you do you want to go over those or do you want to discuss uh S and bitcoin a little bit more go for it go for it um you know i think the uh the S bitcoin chart looks good uh, particularly given the fundamentals with kind of the DeFi craze going on. DeFi just hit $3 billion. Uh, and it kind of seems like the market is uh, bidding out of VeChain, Chainlink, and Cardano, for example, uh, and like getting back to business. And then you can kind of throw privacy coins in there, I think are going to see a, a surge. And there's, there's, good, there's good reason behind that. We've talked about that. Uh, and then, you know, yeah. Dogecoin, no 100 sats. Um, you know, it's probably the, the trade of the Ooh, century here. No, it's Dogecoin to a dollar, I thought. Yeah, I mean, 100 sats, a dollar, you know, I'll take whichever yeah. comes first. Actually, I know this guy on another Discord server who's a Dogeonaire. He was an early miner on Dogecoin. He's like, I'm just holding this thing until they're a dollar a piece. I don't care how long I have to hold on to it. I don't care if I'm holding on to Doge in 2030. I'm selling once it hits a dollar. I'm out. So Shout out to you, CJ. Yeah, he's probably... I know you don't watch the show, but he's probably just like now's my chance he's been sitting low for mm -hmm. so long mm -hmm. yeah um yeah let's see uh litecoin and oh, that's need to zoom in here so oh by yeah. the way i wanted to mention this uh this didn't come up uh i i see this didn't come up and kind of in the news um topics for today but uh grayscale uh is going to be offering litecoin and bitcoin cash uh products yeah. on the open market on you know mm -hmm. on the stock market so with you know obviously my bullishness about litecoin is uh is is pretty pretty well vetted uh, i have put out multiple calls for accumulation on litecoin in different areas i've put out my weekly charts on litecoin and um yeah yeah so this is uh this is kind of the 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 push that i think we need i agree yeah i think uh litecoin's got a, just a ton of room yeah definitely a great accumulation zone um, or just Justin, uh, someone did ask, uh, and it <clears throat> has to do with the uh, the earlier analysis of the the key June, uh, the Ichimoku. But he's like, Justin, can you compare BTC on the cloud in September of 2017 to now? Seems very similar. Low volume, holding the cloud with bullish sentiment in the near future. All right, let's see here. Yeah, let's go back over to uh, Justin's screen for a sec. You know, my screen still overlaid yours, right? anymore he got it um so we want to look at you know you're kind of talking about september let's see here so we'll just mark off september this is the beginning of, this is the beginning of september right here uh you want to mark off and 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 kind of compare september with what we got going on right now gladly is there any uh can you bring volume up on that as well yeah, yeah doing it right now um so Let's look at the volume structure as we kind of move into September. And I would certainly argue that we see rising or if, if anything, consistent volume, rising or consistent volume as we progress through September. And September ended with a bullish continuation of the trend. Um, all right, so we get the, yeah, so we get, this is a, so we get a sell side signal right here. The problem with the signal is that price is above uh, the Tenkin and the Kijun, the Tenken, right? Yeah. So there's no there's no area to set a stop loss using the Ichimoku system because the stop loss is always almost always the baseline, the Kijun, right? So when price closes on the opposite side, so this would be an invalid signal, regardless of whether we're above or below the cloud. Also, look at the cloud structure. This is a very streamlined cloud, uh, which kind of suggests or says to me that we're in the beginning of a trend, not that we've moved up so exponentially that it's taking forever for the cloud to catch up which is really where we find ourselves right now. Uh, and there's also, I think, very little, um, uh, you know, very little, um, very little chop as compared to where we are right now. Uh, you know, we top out right here. Uh, we have a minor pullback and then a weak kind of secondary upthrust on falling volume and then a pretty big sell off that culminates right here uh, in, in a high volume spike uh, at the cloud. We do bounce off the cloud, uh, a big buyback, and then price does kind of chop forward until uh, we get in. Uh, we get another TK cross right here. 
Uh, and we're above the the, uh, the Tenkan and the Kijun. We're above the Ichimoku cloud. So this is a good buy signal. And you would trade this the exact same way to trade the short, just opposite. You'd set your stop loss below the Kijun, which right here would be right around 39.64. And price progresses all the way up. We never close below the Kijun. Like you can ride this trend all the way until you actually get the sell signal over here. And with an entry around 3,000, you end up getting at around 11,000. Uh, and multiple opportunities for distribution uh, throughout these tops. So um, I would argue that that this doesn't look very similar. Um, maybe the preamble up into August begins to look a little similar just because of um, just because of kind of the lowered volatility. But one thing I want to look at is I want to look at ATR. Uh, so let's look at ATR throughout this range. ATR we can see rise throughout the majority of um, uh, September. And it's only really here as we reach the very end of September and we move toward that breakout where we do begin, this is after the big volume spike, and we do begin to move in a pretty consistent direction uh, that ATR begins to fall. Uh, and then once the trend resumes, we can see ATR begin to pick up quite a bit. So compare that with what we see right now uh, with throughout this entire consolidation period, we've seen consistent falling volume and consistent falling volatility in the form of falling ATR. Um, just historically, and in my experience, this is not bullish, at least not in the short term. So we need, you know, for the, for the, for this bullish scenario to play out really, in my opinion, for us to have bullish continuation out of here, um, well, obviously price just needs to move up, which is fine. Then the trending indicators will kick in and we'll take the trending long. But the, you know, this is a fundamental play, right? We need the desire or the demand for hard currency to be greater than the fear of, uh, of holding risk on assets. Mm -hmm. And that, that's why, I mean, with that, like, <clears throat> you, if you, you can go to my chart real quick, uh, just give the example of what I'm looking at, just so everyone else has an idea. I posted it to the group, but. I, I I don't think that the yes we have gone sideways out of the uh, the ascended tr <clears throat> ascending triangle, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the the pattern is broken to me at least unless we break the eighty nine hundred level here. But that's why um, the group will see that after I hit take profit one and two, I moved my take profit at three up to the. Uh, uh, 10,100 range because I do believe that if this were to play out like a triangle, we're going to get a, a big old bump right up to that horizontal level, reject back down, and then the breakout. But uh, of course, this is just speculation, but I do like that we're just now beginning to break out of this trend, um, this, this decreasing volume trend. We're now starting to print a volume bar above. Uh, Phil said something here about the VIX. Um, VIX is, so longing volatility is something that should always be in your long-term portfolio uh, because it outperforms when uh, your directional bias is incorrect or when your allocations are incorrect. Um, I don't see the, I don't see what I would want to see uh, in the VIX right now. So fear is relatively low. I don't see an increase in this fear. Um, I would like to see price begin trending up. If you were to take this trade, it would be a double bottom trade. Uh, also, uh, double bottom off the fact that you have this gap to the upside on the VIX, but you always want to play the VIX fundamentally. So, it, you know, if there is a strategy for the VIX, it would be more reversal than anything else in sense, uh, because what you want to do is have it balance your portfolio trade. So if you have, if you have a lot of directional bias on and you've noticed that the volatility in the markets is, has been dropping off. Um, longing VIX is good because VIX is not just the fear index, but it's also the volatility index. So uh, depending on where you're at, I don't think this is going to be the right play for many individuals that are watching this channel, but the uh, BTC move contract on FTX might be the actual better play. When are we having the Friday night Fortnite tournament? Man, whenever, you, whenever you're ready to get, whenever you're ready to get wrecked, buddy. <laughs> Get my golden peely on there, and we'll get down. Uh, <laughs> Kids as ringers. Hey, yeah, let's... no cheating. No, no, no. It's I'm gonna, I'm gonna need my 11 year old. Yeah, you give me the headset and you play. Yeah, I'll sit here. <laughs> I'll sit. I'll sit here and talk smack. All right, we're getting we're getting kind of close to the end of the show. Um, 
because uh, I wanted to, to run it nice and tight and we've got some other stuff to do today. I want to get, uh, I want to get, make sure that everybody gets access to the online trading Academy. And, uh, we had a lot, we had a great initial reception to the members come home emails. A lot of individuals, uh, uh, emailed us taking advantage of that. So, uh, we've got a lot of customer support to do on that as well, making sure they get in and, uh, and everything is good. So, um, let's see here, just a couple, couple, um, couple notable mentions here in the news, uh, before we leave was, uh, Robin hood. They were looking at launching a, uh, UK, um, version of their uh, app and, and kind of expanding out globally they have uh, they have postponed that indefinitely just freezing their global expansion plans in general uh, perhaps because they finally understand that they're not going to be able to they shouldn't launch into their countries before they fix the uh, uh, the overload issue that kind of took them down uh, about a month ago so I don't know you guys got any thoughts on this Yeah, we'll probably be diving into this uh, into this a little more tomorrow. But uh, I think it was backlash for uh, too many too many retail traders piling in and getting themselves in trouble, particularly young people. Right, the, the the app is disproportionately popular with millennials, and I can imagine a lot of them probably blew their stimulus money inappropriately on the platform, buying you know puts and calls and options and all sorts of uh, uh, you know products that they shouldn't. Rabbit and it's the ultimate bucket shop operation. It's like more of a bucket shop than BitMexus. Yeah. Definitely something we're going to explore tomorrow, though. Cool. And uh, DeFi locked assets nearing $3 billion. I mean, We were just talking about this the other day. It seems like, uh, you know, just like, just, billion? Yeah, just like two weeks ago, we we're like, it hit a billion. And then last week, we we're like, what hit two billion? And now it's at three billion. So certainly a lot of locked uh, nav on the network, which you know, as long as that money continues to be locked up is a bullish fundamental for the price of Ethereum. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I see you, Mania, all over again. Yeah. And uh, let's see here. MasterCard announcing expansion of cryptocurrency efforts, uh, getting a deal here with WireX. So just off the heels of uh, kind of WireCard, uh, we've got, uh, we've got uh, MasterCard just to say it, just muscling in and saying, yeah, we'll take it, man. Let's go. I think it's similar to the to the PayPal uh, announcement. I'm not sure if it was officially announced, the rumors or with the unconfirmed stuff, but uh, yeah, these uh, these mainstream payment processors, just like uh, Cash App, are you know everybody's piling in for the for the crypto crypto money. Yeah, and this is a nice diversification because the majority of uh, the the majority of cards that have been issued, we can see here for Crypto.com, Spend.com, 10x, uh, Wirex, Coinbase, BitPay, Uphold. Um, Swipe, Binance, uh, I'm not really familiar with all these other ones, but uh, it's, it's all, it's Come almost all, <laughs> yeah, it's almost all Visa. So, so with MasterCard kind of coming in here for, uh, what do we got here? Uphold and Bitwalla. This is uh, a little bit of nice diversification. So in the United States, uh, people can grab their Uphold MasterCard and their BitPay, uh, their BitPay Visa card, as well as their Crypto.com uh Crypto.com metal card. Walletto well, is the it's Italian yeah. Bitcoin. And we'll talk, I'm going to talk about this a little bit more tomorrow. This is uh, kind of the bank runs that are occurring on in China. And I want to correlate this with uh, some of what Ansel's been talking about lately because, and, and some what some other people have been reporting on as well, because um, the, the flooding that's going on in China right now with the Three Gorges is, uh, is, is not to be underestimated. It's also good for the price of Bitcoin. It's uh, cheap hydroelectric power. Then... Uh, I don't to to accompany this story. Um, they uh, China actually ended up nationalizing several of these banks. I, I see this. This article is actually from last Wednesday. So several of those banks actually ended up getting nationalized by uh, by China. About I think like three or four of them, and they, they say that they had like broken rules or something like that. But but really, you know. The, the government had to step in and restore public trust in the banks. Like, don't worry, we got these banks. You get your money, you don't have to do a run on them. And, you know, obviously everybody's like, well, you know, our government is backing these things. But, uh, yeah, I, and for those of you, I mean, our viewers are pretty educated. But for those of you who don't know, um, you know, nationalizing is like a step beyond a too-big-to-fail loan. It's like, you know, this is now essentially a government entity. Yep. All right. Well, that about wraps it up for today's show. Any uh, anything you guys want to say before we part ways here? Buy altcoins. 
buy altcoin. All right. Buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin. <laughs> I think just risk on. Risk on, guys. Risk, risk on. on. Risk, risk on. on, Wayne. Last chance to buy Bitcoin under 10k, potentially. Price uh, will I mean, never go, go below 9k again. I'm not gonna go Don't that FOMO, far, guys. I, I do think we see continuation out of this, just off of how the market's reacting right now. But I mean, we'll we'll see. That's why I like trading the way I do, to where I don't have to be right. If I get stopped out at break even, I have lost any money and blocked in profit, and then we'll take the next trending signal. But it appears at the daily, like with Justin's Donchian system, that we might be getting a uh, our first actual trending signal here. Yeah. Overall, I'm gonna you know I'm gonna I'm gonna advise people to be cautious, man. We've had a pretty yeah. good run of it, and I think that um, it is not it is not a bad time to realize profits on on holds that individuals have had on the better trades that individuals have had to you know begin planning or uh you know to, to be conservative right you have big runs and then everybody's very very eager for that run to continue uh, but often mm -hmm. what can happen is exactly what go, what happens with bitcoin is price goes sideways for two months and it attempts to drain all your money away from you because you're kind of jumping at every shadow so you know be watchful for yeah. continuation i would really like to see more rather than a few uh, that rather than one candle so um yeah mm -hmm. be, be be conservative out there guys because the market is not designed by nature to give you money it's designed to take money away from you so uh fall, never, you know but never expect a moonshot out of one trade oh and we'll cover we'll talk about that a little bit more today uh, a little bit more tomorrow all right thank you guys so much for joining me i'll see you guys later on this afternoon make sure to hit that like button people it's harder than you think and we're already getting shadow banned all have right. a good evening thanks guys Cheers, boys. <laughs> All right, let's switch over to this scene so we can say goodbye. All right. Well, that was awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining me for another exciting episode of Breaking Bitcoin Market Update with your host, Justin Wise. Very pleased to have uh, senior analyst Alexander, uh, junior analyst Jason, and Jack on the show for today, breaking down some of the news, breaking down some of the charts. Just a nice, uh, kind of a nice venture from what we normally do. Uh, be back to normal structure tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be spending the majority of today making sure that our returning members get onboarded appropriately uh, and that everybody gets access to the online trading academy, which they really, which, which, which is, a, it, it is in high demand right now. So uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, sarcastic remarks, or death threats, leave them in the comment section down below. And we will be randomly picking one person from the comment section once a month to receive a one month access free to the premium trading group. So uh, look forward to that. Make sure to smash the like button on your way out, guys, if you enjoy the content. We will be back tomorrow at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time for another episode of Breaking Bitcoin, a market update. And remember, guys, at the end of the day, as I say every single day, uh, it is not moonshots. It is not TA that actually pays the bills around this household. It is emotional discipline and position sizing and consistently applying my strategies to the market, regardless, excuse me, or regardless of what is happening in the market or what anybody else tells me to do. So uh, be your own man, be your own lady, and follow your own system, and all will be well, guys. Don't listen to the noise and be conservative out there, guys. It's a pretty tenuous time in the market where you know the, the opportunity for max pain is quite possible. And I'm not talking the PS2 game, although that one was pretty decent. Um, all right, guys, you guys are fantastic. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Trade safely as always and be good to one another.